Welcome to the Big Dave Podcast. B105 and Thomas Red, it's the Big Dave Show. Man, it feels good to be back in school again. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Everybody, everybody that went back yesterday, uh, Cincinnati Public going back today, a lot of other schools, and uh, I just thoroughly enjoy, I look forward to it every year, the first day of school pictures, uh, seeing all my friends on Facebook and Instagram and everything, posting up the pics yeah. of the kids. You know? Here they are. I saw Chelsea's. I, Stan, I didn't see yours. Did you have one? I saw an old throwback picture of you and Leader Hosen and the girls. Yeah. Uh, did, were, were yours up? Uh, I did not. I have permission from my teenage daughters to post their pictures yet. Okay, so all right. I respect their, uh, their opinion now because they're teenage girls. Yeah. You know that is. You got to be careful there. And well, they're the biggest critics, too. They'll, like, zoom way oh, in. Yeah. Oh, well, look at my face. I was like, nobody's going to see this. It's got to get approval yeah. as they get yeah, older. Nice. I threw up yesterday uh, on my first day in the school pickup line. I said the much less heralded. Uh, first day of school pickup line pick oh, yeah. that I put up on our B105 Instagram page. But we got something cool going on over there. It's at B105 Country uh, that you can do with your back to school pictures. Okay. And what is it, Ashley? So we want to give you $500 basically oh, right. for your back to school photos. So what you'll need to do is follow at B105 Country on Instagram. This is not any other platform contest. So if oh. you don't have Instagram, download it. Get it on there. Yeah, it can, it can connect to your Facebook. You follow us. What you're going to do is post your child's picture on your profile, on your page. On your Instagram You might page. have already done this. Yeah, exactly. you might have. You got to go back and edit it now. Yes, you're yeah. going to use two hashtags. Hashtag B, the letter B, in school 2021. All right. So B in school 2021 okay. and hashtag contest so we can find you. And you're then you're going to tag us at B105 Country. So we can right. find your picture. So hashtag B in school 2021, hashtag contest, tag at B105 Country, and your profile needs to be set to public so we can search and find and you. And find you. When right. you win And you can win $500. $500 just for us. And we want to see your back to school picks. So mm-hmm. it's very good. Get over, follow at B105 Country on Instagram is the first step you got to do. Yes. Very simple. And all the details are right there, too. Right yeah. there, too. Easy peasy. So, uh, yeah, so that's nice. Back to school. We were talking yesterday extensively about uh, getting on the buses. And we had our bus horror stories. I think the best was uh, Chelsea's bus and out in the countryside of Indiana actually hitting a cow <laughs> on the way to school. Uh, that was hard to top until Brandon decided to call. And Brandon from Trenton had this to say. Man, I'll tell you what. I was in sixth grade over here in good old Trenton, and we had one of them good old hateful bus drivers. Looked like she shouldn't be driving a bus. She'd be driving a broom or something. With bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened? We were sitting there in the bus on the way home from school one day, and all my buddies was like, man, you need to moon that bus driver. I'm like, no, no, I'm not going to moon her. They're like, come on, I dare you. I'm like, no, they're like, come on, we dare you. So we get to our stop, and I get ready to walk up the steps of the bus, and she sticks her arm out. She was apparently listening, and she says, go ahead, I dare you. Oh, oh my. my. Oh. And I walked out in front of that bus, I dropped my drawers, and I smacked both cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she ended up telling on me, and then I got kicked off the bus. And boy, was my dad pissed. He wasn't pissed at me; he was pissed at the bus driver. So he made me go to my buddies and stay for a week and ride his bus without telling anybody. Oh my <laughs> god, <laughs> that's an awesome story, Brandon. I don't say this often, but you are the greatest American hero ever. I just want you to know that. All right, right on, brother. You guys have a great one. You do. <laughs> It's a 616 B105 traffic check now, Chelsea. What's going on there? This is the Big Dave Podcast. B105 and Cole Swindell, the Big Dave Show. We've got a scattered shower, some heavy downpours throughout the morning into early afternoon, mid-afternoon, maybe clouds, otherwise 81 right now. Some uh, light rain here, 71 at B105. If you're not following B105 on Instagram, you should. It's at B105 Country. If you go over there right now, find out how you could win $500 just for posting your kid's back-to-school picture on Instagram, mm-hmm. which you're going to do already yeah. on your Instagram page. It'll tell you everything you need to do right there, but it's at B105 Country. You have to be following us on there to be eligible. Speaking of back-to-school pictures, yesterday was a big day. Today, another big day of back-to-school. I saw lots of pictures in my timeline, and we got this call on our What the Hell line from Michelle about that subject. This is Michelle, and I've just got to say one thing about my son on his first day of school. 
So, you know, before school, we do all the clothes shopping, get him all these nice new clothes, and I decided to let him dress himself for the first day of school so I can take that cute little first day photo. And so he comes down the stairs, head to toe in, like, old ratty clothes, like an old T-shirt, gym shorts, you know, old dirty tennis shoes, completely all old stuff. And I just... I don't understand why it feels like him and all his little buddies have like an aversion to like new clothes for school. Um, so if you want, you can give me a call back. Uh, my number is 859-162. We have called back Michelle here. And I think this is a problem as old as the ages here. Michelle, good morning. Good morning. So first day of school, you don't make, that's a rookie mistake. I mean, is, are you like a first time mom ever that you let him dress himself for the first day of school? What's going on there? I have to say a big what the hell about that, Michelle. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Okay, so you call me. He is an only child so far. And I just thought it'd be cute if, like, he got to pick out what he wore. Yes, right. we'll pick, Hold on. We got to amend that. Pick out. Of the things you've chosen of him to wear, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. pick out of this certain thing. Let me tell you something. Uh, <laughs> My son's almost 14. I still have to pick out what he's going to wear. And he still messed it up. Wait, <laughs> what? Okay, so Rory in his first day of school photo yesterday had on what, Chelsea? <laughs> Two different socks. Well, what? that's a thing, though, with the kids. My son, yeah. and they don't care. One was black, one was white. And you could see him because he had shorts on with his checkered vans that didn't even match. <laughs> Nothing, Matt. They don't care. Why do we spend the time even sorting through it, right? Are you guys match socks up in the laundry room, too? Oh, I used to have a plastic bin when they were little because it would there would be a stray sock just come through the washing machine. So I And it would be like the greatest feeling in the world if I ever reunited a found pair together. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, this is, I really accomplished something. I don't care if they go to college or anything. I found the other sock. I was, whatever. <laughs> Michelle, though, you changed him before the picture, right? I did. I wanted to be that cool mom that rolled with it. But, like, the, the clothes, like, look dirty. Like, I couldn't send him to school like that. So we did get changed. No. It's like my son, Darren. He's going into eighth grade. They don't care. They really don't care. And mm -hmm. I have a joke. It's like, if me and him are going to go to Skyline, he immediately puts on a white shirt for to eat chili. Of course. Okay? Yes. And I'm like, there could not be a worse colored shirt to be wearing right now than white. Because I know I'm going to have to try to bleach that out of there because he's inevitably going to get some on there. My son will go to school with the T-shirt on, and he'll come home. I'm like, did you know that had a little hole in the back of it? I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> uh, really? Man. It was much easier when I was a youth when we had Garanimals. You know? <laughs> Do, does anybody remember Garanimals? Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. All right. So you had, if you had a pair of shorts that had a zebra on it, then yeah. you found a shirt that had a zebra on it, and you were matching. Oh, my God. You know, if it was a zebra and a cheetah, you were way off. You needed to go back in and rethink your outfit. Do you remember Garanimals, Michelle? I do. I do remember those. When did they stop making those? I, that's new to me. That's Probably before I graduated in the 1800s, it sounds <laughs> like. Saying, Everybody's going, years oh, ago. God. He also rode to school on horseback. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like, how old are you? <laughs> no, but I mean, that's, there's something to be said for that, though. For having, you know, already pre-matched clothes that are semi-decent. Yeah. Well, then you might as well just go to private school and wear a uniform, that right? That sounds expensive. You know what? You talk to parents of kids at Catholic schools, that wear, and they're like, fine by me. Because there's no arguments or anything about you're not wearing yeah. that to school. They know what they got to wear to school, and that's that. And they all wear the same thing, so they can't make fun of each other no. for having different outfits. My favorite, though, is what I see in the winter when I'm down at Kroger and the girls from Notre Dame Academy come in, and they still have to wear the skirts, yeah. but they have sweatpants on underneath them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. You go, girls. You're staying warm and good for you. Oh. Well, Michelle, I'm sure there's a lot of other horror stories, so hopefully you got a good picture and everything went well. We did. We did. Thanks, guys. So uh, our midday host and program director of B105, Grover Collins, just heard this break going on and decided to leap in here live because he has a first day of back to school clothing fail. What is it, Grover? It was, uh, it was a very personal failure for me. What did you do? Oh, I wore parachute pants the first day of school, my sophomore year in high school. You know, and I knew, I knew it wasn't me, but they were so popular. Oh, Chelsea, you remember? Yes. Yes. I remember. You, you I, had a, I had a pair of red ones with zippers down the side. Oh, and I'm gosh, like, oh my oof. God, what was I doing? Mine were black. And I only wore them once because the whole day I just felt self-conscious. I'm a Levi's guy, a, yeah. a jean jacket, t-shirt, 
kid. Yeah. I still am that yeah. guy. You yeah. tried yeah. to step out of your comfort zone. And it was wrong. It was uncomfortable, <laughs> wasn't it? it was, I couldn't wait to get I no. I just, yeah, it was, uh, that was weird. I was just so, I mean, here I am in my 50s, and I still remember, and I still have the same emotion. Like Your face is red. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get them at the casual mail? Remember that store? I, the casual I, mail? Geez, I don't know. What was that, 83, 84? I don't, I don't remember. But, man, that, that was a fad, thankfully, that did not last long. Just like the Michael Jackson jacket oh, yeah. with all the zippers. That didn't last long. <laughs> the MC Hammer pants. Oh, yeah. Thankfully, oh, I was in college when that started, and I was like, I'm done. Yeah, I was I'm in high school then, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The only thing I could really relate to is we had what was called gauchos. Does anybody? I remember those, yeah. And I wore yeah. them, like, in middle school because they weren't in the dress code, and they were these big baggy pants, and all the girls wore them. And, I mean, they were just ugly as hell. I grew up in the 90s. The Junko jeans, the the bottom of your pants would cover your shoes completely. Yeah, that was the 90s. Now, the early 90s when I worked in radio in Minnesota, there were Zumbas. You ever see those Zumba pants? Oh, we had the Bengal Stripe Zumba pants. They were everywhere up there. I just never fell into that one. I'm like, that's not me either. Uh, There's been a lot of fashion fails. and Luckily, we found our rut and we've stayed in it. (laughs) (laughs) Very good way to put it. Yeah. Brandy just reached out through Facebook and said they still sell Garanimals at Walmart. Well, they do. For adults, because I might be interested. <laughs> I'm telling you that. This is the Big Dave Podcast. B105 Big Dave Show short-term memory game. We got the lovely Jessica from Anderson here. Jessica, did you ever have a back-to-school clothing fail? You know what? I went to a private school, so I was in the uniform. You didn't have okay. to worry about it yet. I'll tell you. What did our own Grover Collins, though, do on the first day of school when you're... What did he wear that embarrassed him greatly? He wore some parachute pants. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, even the parachute couldn't save him from the embarrassment <laughs> that was falling in my Oh. All right, congrats, girl. Thank you. My kids are going to be so excited. Hey, you got a four-pack of tickets to see the Reds play the Marlins on Family Sunday this Sunday at Great American Ballpark. And it's Jesse Winker Fathead Day for kids 14 and younger. Awesome. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the game. Thanks for listening to B105, Jessica. Have a great day. This is the Big Dave Podcast. Comfortable sunny and 75 in the status sphere. Let's find out what's snapping in. Thanks to Snappy Tomato Pizza. Here we go. And now. now, now. Dude, check this out. B105 presents news from the Statosphere. How would you like to be, you know, just shopping for dinner, picking out some spices when a giant snake jumped out at you? What? what? Yes. Well, that's exactly what happened. A snake slithered out of the spice shelves at a Sydney supermarket. But luckily, Kalania Alati 25 was at the Woolworths and knew exactly what to do. I was browsing through the spice aisle and um, the face of a 10-foot python just kind of poked you out next to me and didn't really spook me out at all. He wasn't coming across as aggressive. Well, Helena... Like 10 foot? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> She's a rescuer of snakes and recognized it as a diamond python and wasn't even scared and <sighs> took her phone out, did a little video with the snake and then casually went up to the front and said, hey, uh... Aisle six, there's a snake clean up there. You if might want to this was me, it would be clean up in aisle six because yeah, I would have peed my pants. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> We're going to need a mop. <laughs> and there'd be lots of broken spice bottles. <laughs> <laughs> they would know what to do. At, and by the way, Woolworths, how great is that? I had no idea they were still oh around. Gosh. But they didn't know what to do. But she did. She went home and got her snake gear and came back and took care of yeah. really easy to catch diamond pythons often are um, I pretty much just held the bag in front of him and gave him a tap on the tail and he just slithered into the bag himself um, and then that afternoon I just took him into some local bushland where he could live a more suitable lifestyle this girl's awesome <laughs> she is wow. a tough chick yes she is well she suspected the snake was probably there overnight and in the store all morning on the spike sh- spice shelf where customers were going by, getting spices, not even knowing the snake was there. They Stop said, it. They <laughs> like to nestle in the rafters of stores in the area because it's nice and cool. Nice and, nice and cool up there. Yeah. Chelsea always summer. has to worry about a, a random frog being in her bag of salad. Now this. I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. She was rewarded. The Woolworths gave her a, a bouquet of flowers and a box of chocolate. How about that? that? <laughs> Very nice. Well, good job. It's uh, 818. That's what's snapping in. Thanks to Snappy Tomato Pizza. What's happening on the roadways, Chelsea? All right. This is the Big Dave Podcast. 
We got good vibes this morning coming out of Dothan, Alabama. But before we get there, you might remember a couple of weeks ago we had the story about a young man who never falls asleep with the TV on, but he did one night and happened to wake up and see a TV morning show there doing their pet adoption thing, and their dog they lost two years ago was actually on the TV yes. being adopted. Yeah, we thought, yeah. that's amazing. All right, so this one says, hold my kibble for that one. You know, you can find just about everything at Walmart that you need, right? It's uh, produce, groceries, uh, big screen TVs, auto parts. We need it. They got it over there. And for one lucky dog, the dog was able to find its human. Oh. Are you ready for this? This is crazy. Ooh, yeah. June Roundtree and her husband lost their little doggy. They had scoured the neighborhood door to door searching for her. Abby was missing and she was gone and they just kind of gave up. Three weeks had passed. No sign of Abby at all. June was doing her weekend shift at the Walmart register when all of a sudden she heard a big ruckus in the store and a bunch of people going crazy and all of a sudden all these people are chasing a dog through the store <laughs> and it's gotten loose and is running wild and finally <laughs> the dog runs right over to the self-checkout line where <laughs> Where June was working, she looks down and she goes, Abby? And the dog turns around, runs over, reunited at Walmart. Somehow or another, that dog was in the Walmart and made a beeline right for June's (laughs) register. It's unbelievable. It is crazy. She says she can't believe it. June says, I called out her name. She came to me. I bent over. I hugged her. I completely lost it. I couldn't believe it. She was in shock. She couldn't believe that this was her dog that had been missing for three weeks inside the Walmart she works at. And, and her checkout link. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. So the Abby looked like she was well fed and been taken care of. And they'd like to thank the people that had obviously been doing that. But she has no idea how Abby ended up in that Walmart that day. That's crazy. That's crazy. Perhaps wow. she had driven with June to that Walmart a couple of times, but stayed in the car in the parking lot. Who knows? That gives me like cold chills. That's I love so it. Wow. I know. It just wow. one of those awesome things. And it's a good vibe. So Abby, the dog reunited with your humans. Have a Walmart day. Good job. <laughs> B105. It's the Big Dave Show. Dad joke of the day on B105. Well, back to school week continues on the dad joke of the day. And we've got Jordan, who's the school resource officer for the city of Monroe. And you're heading back to school today. Are you ready to face the kids there, Jordan? We are. Well, you got a good dad joke in your arsenal now. What do you have? So you know how lions are kings of the jungle, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think they golf? I don't think they do, no. I bet a tiger would. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Ah. So, Jordan, before you go, let me ask you, what does a school resource officer have to do on the first day of school? I don't know. I'll let you know at 4 (laughs) o'clock. Hey, good luck today, brother. Appreciate it, guys. Have a good one. This is the Big Dave Podcast. Who's Brad? B105, The Big Dave Show. It is time to play the game we all love to say, Who's Who's Brad? Brad? And we got Donna from Cincinnati here. Good morning, Donna. Good morning. Would you like to go see Brad Paisley this Sunday night? Oh, most definitely. Oh, yeah. Listen to you. You got all sultry there. All right. (laughs) Brad Paisley might be in trouble. Well, we're going to read you some statements. You got to tell us whether it's Chelsea's husband, Brad, or Kimberly's husband, Brad. Are you ready to do this? Sure. Okay, Chelsea, give the lovely Donna her first one. He spends an enormous amount of time cleaning up his backyard because he has so many dogs. Ooh. (laughs) Donna, who's Who's Brad? Brad? Chelsea's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is he the only one that cleans it up? He is, actually. Wow. Come on, Chelsea. Get off the couch. You're watching too much TV. Get out there and help with those dogs. You're the one one that wanted them. How big of a pooper scooper do you need for Great Danes, by the way? He has to use a big shovel. Oh, my. All right. All right, Donna. You're on your way here. Let's get the second one, Ashley. Okay, Donna. The last thing he does before going on stage is brush his teeth. Oh. Oh, all right, Donna. Who's Who's Brad? Brad? Kimberly's. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I guess, you know, make sure you don't have any broccoli in your teeth. I don't know. Is anybody going to see that from the audience? Oh, with the Jumbotron. Oh, that's right. What's up? Well, he must have had spinach before the show. (laughs) Yikes. All right. Final one, Chelsea. He lost his glasses at a strip club during his bachelor party. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Who's Who's Brad? Brad? Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> there was another bachelor party the next weekend, and the guys that were on that one got his glasses back. <laughs> How long did it take to get all the glitter off of them? <laughs> Congratulations! 
Thank you. Donna, you got a six-pack of tickets to see Brad Paisley with Jimmy Allen at the Icon Festival stage this Sunday. Thank you so much. You got it. We'll do another round tomorrow right here on B105. This is the Big Dave Podcast. B105. It's Chelsea's College of Hollywood Knowledge. Can somebody take her down? And this morning, we've got Elizabeth from Independence KY ready to take on Chelsea and take her down in the movies that take place on airplanes edition here. It's aviation day. Do you like to fly, Elizabeth? Uh, sometimes when there's not a lot of turbulence. Uh, uh, it can get a little rough up there. And there's been a lot of movies about planes that take place on planes. And we've got five of them. Are you ready to do this? Yep, let's do it. Because if you get more right than Chelsea, you're going to win. If she gets more right than you, she wins. And all ties will go to Chelsea. Her overall record is 1,825 wins against 21 losses. A 37-game winning streak. You're playing for 100 bucks of her money. And if you end up tying five out of five, we'll give you fifty dollars and snappy tomato pizza bucks. Good luck, Elizabeth. Awesome. Good luck, Chelsea. All right, Chelsea's heading out of here. Elizabeth, are you ready for question number one? Yes, sir. The movies that take place on airplanes edition. Here we go. Harrison Ford played the president who takes matters into his own hands when his plane is hijacked in this nineteen ninety seven film. Air Force One. Question number two. Nicolas Cage, John Malkovich, and John Cusack starred in this 1997 film about a group of dangerous prisoners being transferred to a supermax prison. Snakes on a plane. Okay, question number three. This 1980s spoof movie inspired countless films like The Naked Gun, Hot Shots, and Scary Movie. What was it? Airplane. Question number four. This 2006 movie starred Samuel L. Jackson, and he made it abundantly clear that he was getting pretty tired of these <laughs> reptiles being on board. Oh, snakes on a plane. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> final one. Uh, this 2005 thriller from Wes Craven starred Rachel McAdams as a woman on the plane being told she must help a terrorist or her father will be killed. What was it? Oh, I have no idea. Okay, let's get Chelsea back in here. Statman tally it up. Elizabeth from Independence KY did how? Well, she got three out of five. Okay, three yeah. out of five. Okay, Chelsea, are you ready for the first one in the airplane edition here, Aviation Day? Okay, I'm ready. Good luck, Chelsea. All right. Harrison Ford played the president who takes matters into his own hands when his plane is hijacked in this 1997 film. Air Force One. Tied at one. Nicholas Cage, John Malkovich, and John Cusack starred in this 1997 film about a group of dangerous prisoners being transferred to a supermax prison. Uh, Con Air. Not snakes on a plane, two to one. This 1980s spoof movie inspired countless films like The Naked Gun, Hot Shots, and Scary Movie. What was it? Airplane. Three to two. This 2006 movie starred Samuel L. Jackson, and he made it abundantly clear that he was getting pretty tired of these reptiles being on board. <laughs> Snakes on a plane. Four to three. Final one. This 2005 thriller from Wes Craven starred Rachel McAdams as a woman on a plane being told she must help a terrorist or her father will be killed. What is it? Mm. I want to say Red Eye. I want to say you're right. Yeah, it's a wow. great movie. Oh, my involved. goodness. Sounds good. Chelsea just racked up a bunch of frequent flyer miles on you there, Elizabeth. <laughs> I believe that, yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say take the walk of shame, but we've got to make sure the seatbelt light is. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Do it. This is Elizabeth, and I plucked out of Chelsea's College of Hollywood Novel. That's all right, Elizabeth. You are awesome. Have a great day, and uh, fly the friendly skies, okay? All right. Thank you. Thanks for checking out the Big Dave Podcast, B105.com. A message from Virginia Department of Health. Not feeling well? Your symptoms may not be allergies or a cold. They may be an early sign of COVID-19. Go to vdh.virginia.gov and search by your zip code and find a COVID-19 testing site near you. Cox can help make your home smarter and your life easier. Now you can use your Contour Voice Remote to connect to your home life cameras so you can view them right on your TV screen using simple voice commands. That makes it easy to keep tabs on what's happening around your home right from your couch. Need to keep an eye on the kids when they're playing outside? Just say, show me my backyard camera into your Cox Voice Remote and watch them while you're in the house. And if you're waiting for a delivery and want to make sure it's there on time, no problem. Just say, show me driveway camera to check on it with your Home Life HD cameras on the TV screen while you go about your day. 
When you live in a home powered by Cox Internet, you can stay connected to what matters and let Cox take care of the rest. To learn more about all the benefits of your connected home, visit cox.com slash thisishome today.